What is up, YouTube? It is your boy, Zach, coming at you again with another video. Uh, today, I'm going to be looking at a good school in the Army that I know a little bit about called U.S. Army Airborne School. Uh, it is a school near and dear to my heart, and not too long ago, Business Insider did a documentary on Airborne School, not too long after I had been, so it was pretty similar. And uh, I thought I'd go through and just give my two cents, go through and uh, see what they show and maybe give you guys a little bit of detail if you're a follower of the channel. If you're not, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, super swipe, if that's a thing, right swipe, super like, all that good stuff. And uh, let's go ahead, we'll get straight into the video and see what they decided to put on the internet about U.S. Army Airborne School. Okay, dramatic intro. Oh, shit! Ooh! When this airborne student collided Ooh. with a Humvee parked in the drop zone... That's not good. Feared she was seriously injured, if not worse. Ooh, yeah, that's that's that looks really painful. She went straight into the side of that. Filming? Yeah, you can't you can't be filming that. Yeah, any, anytime there's like any injuries or anything like that, airborne, like if there's anybody filming, that is like totally not allowed. But I'm surprised they were. He just happened to be in the right place at the right time to catch this one. She looks like looks like she came burning into the side of that Humvee. That sucks. Stop recording while the medics oh. tended to her. Hope she's all right. Minutes later, she uh, was back on her feet and walking with oh hell yeah. Assistance. When we <laughs> caught up to her, she was all smiles. Huh. Ready hell yeah. Jump. The medic checked me out. Oh, she's LT. I okay. Anything. I didn't Way to go, LT. I didn't break anything. I was very grateful uh, and also very. Looks like she's on her. That, I didn't that was her fourth up. jump. That may be due to the fact that Davis Ooh. listened to this instructor's advice. The right PLF, she's pulling that riser. She's trying she's trying to get away from it. Oh. Feet and knees together is an essential component. Yeah, I know, they're going to say this a thousand times in the documentary probably, but uh keeping your feet and knees together part, proper proper part of the PLF uh parachute landing fall uh system. Basically, just keep your feet and knees together. Don't land on one foot at a time and you will not break your legs. Almost guaranteed. I did it 5 times. Five jump jump over here, and uh, I was fine. So keep your feet and knees together if you're going to airborne school. Of executing a safe landing after a jump. There you go, right feet there. Feet together, feet and knees together, feet and knees together, feet and knees together, feet and knees together. Keep your feet and knees together. See a couple of similar faces over here already. Hell yeah. It's a phrase heard ad nauseum at airborne school. Oh yeah, they say it every every day. Course where the you hear it forty five thousand times. To become paratroopers. Throwing yourself out of an aircraft is not a natural thing. No. If you get an altitude of 1,250 feet, it is a feeling like nothing you have ever felt before. <laughs> it is It is fun. It is really, really fun. At airborne school. Oh, God. I fucking hated doing that. In the three phases of training. Do that, you do that a thousand times. When they land on the ground, Multiple days of just jumping off that wall. And it's just building that confidence and they equip. Oh my god, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces on these instructors. Don't call me out. Overcoming your fear of jumping. Jump week is the culminating oh, event. Soft. Out of aircraft. Perfect landing over there. Successfully make five jumps and you graduate airborne skew. Airborne skew. Overall objective is to provide a capability to put a battalion size plus element in a location within 72 hours. Sounds about right. On day one. Students have to pass two physical assessments. First, two, you're ready. First, oh. the flex arm hang. Arm. So normally the physical assessments you're going to have a PT test, but due to like I think COVID and all that stuff, when I went through, we we didn't do a PT test. Um, that ended up being a problem for a couple people that just like they must have slacked off a little bit during PT before they went because uh, they were having a couple problems on some of the runs and stuff like that. But for the most part. Most people didn't have too much of a problem just because we didn't do the PT test. Um, but yeah, they're getting into the flex arm hang, which this shouldn't be bad. If you're going to airborne school, just make sure you can hang, do a couple pull-ups. Like It's super important to be able to pull up because that affects using the risers and stuff like that later on. But I think they're going to talk about it anyway. Where students must perform a pull-up and remain in place yeah. for 10 seconds. Oh! This exercise for some people it's harder than you think technique and amount of upper body strength to perform what's known as a slip 
where a paratrooper grabs handles on the harness called risers and yep. pulls down to adjust the parachute's direction. To really pull good slip, you're pulling, I think, 60% of your body weight. Yeah, yeah. You, you you're doing a pull-up, basically. You ain't going like cable. You are a reach assessment failure. Do you understand? The second physical test assesses Just be tall his enough at this point. to reach the cable they must connect to before jumping. Very easy. Being, uh, Such a hard a physical student, assessment. I was definitely nervous about that. But when I got there, I stretched my arm out as high as I could and realized, all right, I qualify. And that was a good feeling because I was a little bit nervous. While most pass with ease. Oh, Some no. Students, a failed reach assessment brings an end to their training before. That's a no go right there. Begins. Oh, that sucks. About 15,000 students. We had a couple people do that. That sucks. Year. Getting all the way there and then just day one like that. That sucks. About 10% of a lot of ROTC cadets I'm seeing. I'm 17 and so I joined right out of high school. My friends now, they're just graduating. They're just going to college. That's the new things that they're starting. And the things I wanted to start right out of high school is, you know, saving people's lives and jumping out of planes. Respectable. Hell yeah. The Army wants still more volunteers from its ranks for parachute duty. Since 1940, paratroopers have been trained at the Fort yep. Benning Army installation, which straddles the Alabama-Georgia border about 100 miles. Oh, gotta love Fort Benning. Atlanta. Gotta love it. A lot of people stay there a little bit longer than they want to. And the fledgling paratrooper gets his wings. His pay will be $50 a month more than regular soldiers of his rank. I don't know what that equates to these days. I don't know if it's that much more worth it. That's the best part right there. Graduate from airborne school, get one hundred fifty dollars. One fifty. Okay. To their paycheck. Yeah, even if you're even if you're a student and you're not going to like an airborne unit because of like I bullock some bullocks for officers they send you there just to get a school under your belt. Um, you will get jump pay for going but it only lasts for like a little while because you only do like five jumps and you only say like jump qualified um for a certain amount of time and then that would just stop if you're not doing any more jumps anymore so you still get paid a little bit extra which is cool classified as hazardous duty incentive pay ground week hell yeah learn how to safely don and rig them before a jump. Airborne, walk all the way to the end. Marking the beginning of ground week. Slap, step, kick, down. Jumpers hit it. The ground week phase gives you confidence in your competency. You're on the left door, confidence in your competency. Right the left hand. You don't have to be the strongest or the smartest. Recover. If you can remember to do very specific things at very specific times, it's easy. you'll be fine. These are your that easy. equipment rings. Below that, you have your saddle. We teach them how to properly put on what's called the harness. Teach them how to rig it, the different components of the harness. Everyone, once you're finished and you're ready for inspection, come to me. After donning and rigging the harness, an instructor... You gotta wear that the students all work. day. You gotta wear that, wow. get used to it. So Turn. you'll get very familiar with how to wear that. So do not worry about that if you're going to Airborne. You'll be wearing it. A majority of your days. Recover. Recover. What's up with the little like love? <laughs> the love tap on the, the seal of approval. What is it? The fourth point of contact? <laughs> Fifth point of contact? Basically they have what's called five points of contact. Yeah. The balls of the feet, the calves, the thighs, the buttocks, and the pull up muscles. Yeah. Recover. The fourth point of contact is the easier accessible <laughs> part of the body that doesn't have It's been a hard thing for them to justify, but I don't see any problems with it. Like you gotta justify. Your equipment is good. I've checked it and you're good to go. You like you, swear, you see him smiling. <laughs> and they'll move to what's called the mock doors. And you're going to do this a thousand times. How to properly do individual exits from the aircraft. Kick. thousand times you're going to do this. Over and just going in circles over and over and over again. Slightly bent and so on and so forth. The mock door prepares students for what it's like to jump. Yep. But it prepares you for kind of jumping out of the door. Ooh. God, it hurts every time. At speeds of about 13 miles per hour, with a force comparable to jumping from a 9 to 12 foot wall. That sounds a lot worse than it is. The parachute sounds a lot worse than it is. PLF from a height of roughly. And you're gonna do this a thousand times as well. Safe technique for landing. 
essentially it is a choreographed movement. and when uh when i did, went through and like graded this they break you down your little sticks your squad sticks whatever and you just do that like one or two days maybe even three during the course and you just you get on top of the wall the grader's got his little checklist and just make sure that you do it right um for some of the higher ranking guys so maybe like your e5 and above um we kind of got like just checked off because like they trust you that you're paying you're paying attention you're doing it right if anybody had any like major discrepancies obviously like they would take us aside and say something about it um but there were there were some dudes that i saw maybe should have went again but uh over the time that you do it you're gonna you're gonna basically learn you're gonna do it a thousand times but definitely some of the like i saw a lot of the privates like any made like little minor discrepancy they would have they would be doing it a couple more times so i don't know if that's just like a rank thing or if that's what but yeah you're gonna do it a thousand times regardless of them creating a banana shape or a rocking chair shape they do a small bunny hop off the wall they hit the ground they tuck their chin down in their chest put their elbows high in front of their face i like to concentrate on keeping their feet together so that there's more surface yeah. area for the impact of jumping out of the aircraft you gotta keep your feet together so that they can roll getting them to bleed off the momentum so that they do not get injured it hurt it was annoying falling <laughs> over and over and over until you get it right yeah you fall Even a lot then, you have to fall more and more Plant. yeah this is my life that's on the line so i appreciate that so yeah oh god ELFs. they moved to the ladder I, I had to so when i was there uh I, I got picked as the guy up there at the top of that little podium and uh basically when my group was going through i had to sit there the entire time which was like i, I want to say like two hours they were doing this uh two separate days like four hours total i was just standing on top of that podium I was like having to help people like get up, make sure they're set, make sure we're like clearing them to go and slide down the thing or whatever. But like, <laughs> I was having to play the balancing game for like four hours, just sitting up there trying, hoping to God I don't fall and bust my ass in front of all these people. Um, so that was kind of a sucky job, but like, whatever. It was like, if that's the worst thing you're gonna do that day, it's like not that bad. Drift apparatus. Zip line they slide across until they're ordered to let go and land. Yeah, you can do it front, Similar back, side, all that. That will happen in the air due to wind. So then they'll have more momentum to actually complete the parachute landing fall yep. and kick it up and over. And there's some people that can do it front just fine, back awful, and then you get the opposite. So you'll find which one you're good at, which one you're bad at. Practice pulling a slip. God, these things were medieval so torture devices. In the direction that you want Hanging in there so if forever. You your front to your left, you're going to pull front left slip as it would be all the way around all four risers. Yep. The T-11 parachute is not technically steerable, but executing a slip you is do the it. only option for avoiding a collision. It's re relatively Whether steerable. Avoiding trees, other jumpers, they do work and that's why we teach them here. Yeah, you will have to avoid other jumpers, which I'm sure they'll talk about. So in the air, I'm confident which direction I'm going to go. And this, oh, the Tower Week. Is taken to a new yeah. Height the following tower Week sucks. Tower Week, you're 34 feet <laughs> off the ground. What are you going to do? Yeah. You know, nobody knows how they're going to react when they're staring that door in the face. And I think everyone... Yeah, the, the problem with, with Tower Week for a lot of guys was that jumping out like hooking up all that stuff you're fine you're confident but like once you actually get there in the door like you're actually up there and you're like ready to jump out like that that realism catch it like catches on but uh the big problem with a lot of guys for tower week was like seeing that the ground was like only that 30 something feet off the ground for some reason was like really different than being up in the plane later on in in jump weeks um and they just like they would stutter more there than i saw them stutter like at the door in the plane now maybe that's after they've done this a couple of times, but I think for the describe the describing a lot of the guys, they would say that it's like you can kind of see the ground and rationalize that the ground is like right there below you. Uh, when during jumping out of the plane, it's like it doesn't really register that the ground's right there below you. So really, for me and a couple other guys, Tower Week was like the most like I guess mentally taxing, just because like you're constantly staring at the ground like right there, like oh shit, I'm about to hit the ground, but like. Every time you're going to be safe, you're in that sling, you know, you're in the harness, you're going to be fine. It's just, it's like that realization that the ground is right there is the big first wake up call. And we had a lot of guys, a lot of guys, mostly like new privates. Um, some of them were even 
uh, slotted to go to rigor school, which is like this times multiple more because you're having to pack your own parachute before you jump. I personally saw a dude who came in the army, just got a basic training, went to this, got to the first tower, jumping out in tower week, and just decided I'm not, I'm not jumping out. I can't do it. Not gonna happen. They like, they can't kick you out, but they were like, I could tell in the instructor's face, like they wanted to, they wanted to kick him out because this dude was like, like hesitating at the door, and like obviously if you hesitate in an actual jump, like that's, that's a no go. You're not going back to airborne school. So. This, for a lot of guys, was the hardest week, and also for a lot of people, it was like their big wake-up call where if, if they really wanted to be airborne or not. So, we'll go on. Had that gut check, if you will, when they were up there. Yeah, you get that gut once check for sure. It, once you're jumping off, you're good. So, the height yeah. of the tower is it doesn't look bad. A lot of people are going to show the panic and the fear of height, and the tower is used to help them control that fear. Yeah. Because the ground's right there when you jump out. Everybody's excited. You walking up stairs just like anybody else. But then now reality sets in when I'm standing yep. up here 34 foot in the air. And now you asking me to jump out. Yep. You got to count to 6,000 every time. Kick out, creating the explosive power required for them to exit the aircraft, getting a good up six out. And doing the combat jumps. Yep. Far away from the aircraft. But you guys will see, like, these combat jumps, they're having the rucks on their front, which adds a little bit more weight to it. Um, from what my buddies have told me, actual combat jumps with actual weight suck way worse. So you'll be fine. Students are observed and evaluated. A lot of familiar faces still. Who critique them until they have developed the Love these guys. Worthy of a live jump. I actually jumped the mock tower 22 times. Good God. Just because I just had to perfect it and get it right. You got to kick out a Good God. Far enough away. 22 times. Woo. Final exercise during tower week. The medieval torture device. Swing landing, Swing landing trainer. God, and before before they get into it, I'll just be real about the swing landing trainer. Obviously, everything you do in airborne school is not that hard, but the swing landing trainer like kicked my ass a bunch just because, for me personally, like hitting the ground because they're about to see they're gonna drop them from these sling these these harnesses and they're gonna hit the ground. But to me, for some reason, I felt like I hit the ground so much harder every time out of these swing landing trainers than I ever did in an actual jump. And I don't know, I don't know what it was. Maybe I was still learning how to PLF properly, but like I just ate shit every time. And uh, when I actually got done with my first jump, I was like, oh man, this isn't even close to that bad. So maybe it's a confidence thing. I don't know. It's it definitely a confidence the thing. Yeah. Oscillation and downward movement that you would experience on a normal parachute jump. They will swing until they get into a good parachute landing fall position. In true parachute landing fall, you are not looking at the ground, so you don't know yeah. when you're going to hit. We don't tell them, I'm dropping you now. We just say, hold what you got, prepare to land. And eat shit. That way they know the ground will be That was a pretty good landing, soon. though. They just won't know when. The instructor pulls a cable that causes the student to Ooh, fall. Saw the legs spread a little bit, this is which is a little natural. This is a dangerous course when it comes to the actual training. We've seen broken bones. We've seen concussions yep. result from this training. More we had a so couple concussions happen training. during swing landing. Jump week. Culminates with jump week. Hell yeah. Where students apply everything they've learned in five different jumps from a live aircraft Flying 1,250 feet yeah. off the ground. Jump week begins with a jog to the airfield. Running down here. Yeah, so they'll probably talk about it, but I'll do it very quick. Uh, the jog to the airfield, I want to say, is about a mile and a half. Probably not two. I want to say it's just like a mile and a half. Um, it's not bad. It's a slow pace. Um, if you go in the summer like I did, it's hot as fuck. Um, but just drink water, you'll be fine. If you struggle with running a mile and a half in boots and your uniform, I mean, going from basic straight to airborne is really not too much you can do aside from just do the PT in basic. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously just like run more with your boots on and you should be fine if you're struggling or you have time to prepare for it. But there were people, believe it or not, the reason why I'm saying it is because there were people that like fell out and straight up got recycled out of the course because they fell out of this run and uh, they just couldn't hack it for some reason for the mile and a half. It might have just been the heat. I mean, Georgia in the heat is pretty fucking bad in the summer. Um, 
but for the most part, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not that bad, but you do it probably every day you're jumping, you do it every single day. Here from the barracks, uh, it's a very slow pace. I found out the purpose of that was to check to see if anyone had any injuries. That too. And then it's a waiting game until you finally get to jump. Students pick up their main and reserve. Or if they show this. Which have been meticulously packed and inspected. Let's see if they the show the whole, the whole thing. Okay, so they, they, they briefly touch on this. Uh, they don't tell you like when you actually get down there really, really early in the morning. We got there at like zero three. Um, obviously, you go through your whole process of like pre-jump checks, pre-jump, like reteaching the class very quickly. They teach the entire course in like a matter of like two hours. Again, every time you jump just to refresh over it. Uh, but right here in the rigger shed, uh, you have to pick up your parachute, pick up your harness and everything, and you run back to the actual um, the waiting area to jump. And uh, I want to say it's only like 200 meters, maybe even less than that, maybe 100 meters. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a smoke sesh because you, you're carrying this thing. I want to say it's like 30, 35 pounds on your shoulders, and you're like having to hold it up here. You're like sucking you know, and you're running back and you got your Sergeant Airborne's fucking yelling at you the whole time. Like, why are you walking airborne? You know? So if you're not a great runner or you can't carry a little bit of weight, definitely work on carrying a little bit of weight at a jogging pace for a little while. It's nothing to really worry about. Cause like, yes, there are some people that like walked and stuff and they got away with it, whatever you're supposed to run, you're supposed to jog back. I mean, I obviously like holding this, like my arms were getting tired. I was having to switch all that stuff. You know, I'm not like, the biggest stud in the world, but uh, there were some guys that could just do it, no problem. So it's it's up to you personally. Like if you weigh like 110 pounds soaking wet, it might be kind of a stressful thing for you carrying that. But yeah, it's not that bad. But it, it was a little bit of a smoke fest. It did suck. The team uses a 13 step process to pack about oh, yeah. 75,000 pairs. Yeah, those riggers. It's a very important job, man. They're very underappreciated. Riggers discover any deficiencies in the parachute, it is removed from circulation. Yep. Yep. They're, they're saving lives every day, man. I'm telling you. you. Get one thing wrong with that parachute, cause a super bad, super bad malfunction. They go through five, five rounds of inspections by the time they exit the aircraft. Just to yep. verify, re verify, triple verify, make sure that everything is in order. Everything from checking the helmet and the actual T11 yep. harness and the parachute for any deficiencies, any cuts, frays, any twists, anything that could injure the jumper or cause uh, malfunction. Yeah, they're getting nervous. Oh, you see all the leg shakes in the shed. You're seeing all the leg shakes. Students wait and wait and wait. And wait. And wait. Oh yeah. Jumps often delayed for hours by weather and yeah. air traffic control. Longest I had to wait was eight hours. I had to wait eight hours okay, to do one right, jump okay, and then go no home. Ones. You can't talk. You can't go to the bathroom. Nope. You just have to sit there in our nice comfy harnesses until you get to jump. Nah. Don't ask why you can't go to the bathroom. Don't ask. Just, just, just don't. Time to board. There's some people that almost pissed themselves. But as soon as we hit the landing zone, I'm not going to say who, but there was a lot of people who, uh, they just dropped trowel right there on the field and just, they had to take a pee. You gotta go when you gotta go. <laughs> the C-130 flies toward Friar Drop Zone yep. on the Alabama side of the Chattanooga Pretty short, River. pretty short ride. It's like maybe 10 minutes. That's where it all comes together. sitting there waiting, it's like it's not real yet. Open, open that door. Like, oh, <laughs> you know, if your heart's not already beating, that's, that's when it starts, because uh, you're just about to go. Yep. Before the students jump, two instructors go Easy to assess that. wind conditions. So they'll jump out, not pull a slip, see where the wind's taking them, and then we'll send that wind data up to the aircraft. On the ground, a smoke bomb ignited in a barrel provides yep. an additional sense of wind direction and speed. The yeah, definitely pay attention to the smoke barrels because they will tell you where the wind is going for sure. Connection will open the chute upon jumping. It's one of those things that you don't know that much about it until you do it. And it's not as scary as people think it is. No, he's right. Because once you're up there, you're jumping out. There's no question. You're you're jumping out. And then it gets real quiet. Absolute peace and quiet. A lot of folks are scared of heights. 
you know, you hear the stories, possible fatalities. And I, anybody that's still watching here, appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around. So you will see lights up there in the top right of the screen um, for the night jumps. If you end up facing this north direction, uh, if you're not trying to look that way, uh, you'll see that little town up there. I want to say that's Columbus, Georgia. Or I know that I think is actually the main post for Fort Benning. Basically, they say Columbus, Fort Benning, whichever one. The lights are on in, on the base or in Columbus like during your night jump. So when you get to right about where you cannot see those lights anymore, like like where the trees are blocking it out, that is like the perfect time to like pull your slip, get ready to land because you are about to land. That was like what we would like inside the airborne school guys that I went to, like we talked about. And that was like the best strategy that worked for me because nighttime, you really can't see the ground very well unless it's like really well lit. Um, so if you don't know where you are, best case scenario, look for those lights off in the distance. Know that when those lights disappear, like horizontally, when you're looking out, cause the trees are blocking it, that is your time to go ahead, start getting ready to PLF, get ready to go. Cause you're about to hit the ground. So that was like a big lifesaver for me on my two night jumps. You allow that to get in your head. But once you get here to the school, you'll see that it's nothing like you ever thought it would be. Not at all. Yeah, 18, totally different. Something seconds you have falling out of the sky, you're in your happy place. Yep. You're chilling. Unless there's the people near you, like I had, the then you're kind of panicking a little bit. The calm. It's like slipping into the void and there's absolute silence. And it's such a cool feeling. But accidents can occur. She's good, right? I knew I was coming for the Humvee. I tried to calm down as much as I could, keep my slip, She's cover my She's trying face, to pull a slip. Just wait for what happened next. At first, Lieutenant Is he going to show her? Just a Is he going to show her smack? To the left, her face and head could have collided with a metal handle on the yeah. side of the Humvee. Mentally, I was back in my plebe combative class at West Point. Um, there's a point in the class where West Point. you are going to get hit in the face and you have to prepare for it. Um, and I thought I'm going to get hit and I have to prepare. It's a good, it's a good thing. You Combatives. Drop, you can't have a clear drop zone. We have to have vehicles out there. That, ma that makes sense. I'm glad they didn't like show her eating well, shit. Cause like I would hate to have that on the internet. Feet knees together. Ready to land. Our next yeah. jump was the night jump. So you can imagine a somewhat traumatizing experience. <laughs> occurring and then i was really really trying to just remind myself that i'm good at this yeah uh, and just have faith in the equipment good it attitude flawlessly flawlessly it was great i'm sure she paid attention <laughs> yeah it's combat jumps those are fun too during the final jump when students jump with about 35 pounds of combat which it won't always be like that because i think due to weather considerations and stuff we didn't we only did one combat jump during the day didn't do a night one Obviously, it changes for every airborne, you know, class that goes through. Um, but the combat jump we did, it was relatively easy. At nighttime, I never had to, like, untie the knots and undo the beads and stuff to let go of my gear. Um, that, I could have imagined, would have been a little difficult for me. But if you're going to an airborne unit, I'm sure you're going to get plenty of training on that kind of stuff. That gear added to their load. It was really nice to get it over with on a combat jump, which that isn't fun because you're carrying all the equipment. But once you get out of the aircraft and you realize that being a smaller person kind of aids in bringing you down to the ground a little bit slower, yeah. it all pays off. <laughs> yeah, being smaller does help a lot. Yeah, Golden Knights, I think. Friends and family gather to see the newest class of airborne qualified soldiers. And it's a quick graduation, too, and I like that. That's good. In and out. Airborne. What you see is a, a student that comes here. They don't know what to expect. They chose to do something that probably over one third of the army won't do. It's true. It's something to have this wing on your chest. You have proven that, hey, you jumped out of a moving aircraft. So they confidence just get greater and greater. If you're going to an airborne unit, you're going to do it over and over and uh, over again. I was afraid of heights, but managed to step into the plate, jump out the plane, and now I can say that I'm airborne qualified. I've definitely grown in confidence <laughs> in myself. I'm a signal officer, so I work on computers. And it's very different having a trust that a modem will function versus <laughs> a parachute opening. <laughs> I'm the last Way to go, member Davis. in my immediate family to become airborne qualified. So 
as my mom would say, I, I'm no longer a dirty, nasty lug. So that's fun. <laughs> that so laugh. Is someone that don't have airborne wings. You can have everything. You got airborne wings. She's great. So that's what we call you, a leg. 376 airborne students that just graduated, no longer a leg. Speaking of numbers of graduating, we're right here at the end. I'm going to go ahead and let it finish. I'll touch on that at the end. Okay, okay, that's it. So <laughs> before I get out of this part, uh, let me go ahead and make it uh, full screen real quick. Okay, so speaking of numbers and all that stuff with the uh, 300 and something something we just said, uh, my class, my airborne class started, I want to say with 367, it was late 360s. And due to injuries and other things unknown, I think we only ended up graduating with about 160 people, something like that. So we we lost a lot of people in my company. I don't know what it was. I think a lot of them were injuries, people just not paying attention to the uh, the instruction, not doing the right thing. I think there was a lot of people who also just straight up quit. You got to keep that in mind too. It's not all just injuries. It's also people that like at any point during that um, class, you can just straight up say like, I don't want to be here. I quit. You go into holdover or whatever, and then you move on to your unit or go back to your unit you came from. Um, so there was a lot of people. I don't know if that's normal for maybe some of you guys who have been to Airborne School. If you subscribe to me or if you're not, if you're just watching the video, let me know. Uh, but we started with like a lot of people. And for some reason, we did not graduate with that many at all. But uh, don't let that scare you if you're getting ready to go. It is not hard in any way whatsoever. It is challenging mentally. And if you don't pay attention to the instruction of knowing how to land and slip and all that stuff, it'll bite you in the ass. Um, there's a lot of guys, you know, I mean, I myself, I had some accidents in the air, like out of my control, where one guy was going out of the plane on one side, I was going out of the plane on the other side, they're supposed to stagger it. I don't know exactly what time I think it's about a second, maybe two seconds in between. Uh, something happened to where I jumped out at the same time as the other guy. And uh, we collided under the plane. And so I ended up doing like a Tony Hawk 900 spin. Don't know what happened to the other guy. I'm assuming he's fine. Nobody died. And so I got did like a Tony Hawk 900 spin. I just was burning into the ground. Uh, ended up having my chute somewhat deploy. I didn't deploy my reserve yet. Probably at that point. Maybe thought of, maybe should have, should have done it maybe. Um, but ended up being super twisted above me. Couldn't move my head around. And uh, they teach you just grab it right here and then bicycle kick your legs like that and you just come untwisted so that happened and i was fine and then on the uh the last jump the night jump uh i think the wind picked up right when we jumped out the guy that jumped out right before me ended up i, I don't think he was slipping i think the wind was just taking him uh, i basically got to the point where i was about to have to start running on top of his parachute which they teach you how to deal with that um, but i was about to have to start running on top of his parachute so i ended up having to pull like an insane, like I'm crawling up the entire parachute slip, probably more than like four or five iterations of me going hand over hand. And uh, I managed to get away from the guy and uh, it was all fine. But if I didn't pay attention to that instruction that the instructors gave to me, um, probably would have ended up being on top of the guy's parachute, him catching my air, either falling through his parachute or having to run off of it. Uh, that would have been a pretty bad day. But uh, yeah, it was a fun time. It was a fun time. So if you're ever looking at going, definitely go. I motivate everybody to go if they want to. And uh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that scary. Not that bad. But, uh, well, yeah. So that was my little reaction to Airborne School. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You know, right swipe, super like, all that good stuff I always say. And, uh, yeah, if you, got, if you guys ever went to Airborne School or if you're looking at going to Airborne School or something like that, feel free to leave your two cents down in the comments. I always like talking to everybody. I respond to every comment that I get because, like, I get, like, a couple. So, you know, I'm always here to talk to anybody if you got any questions anything like that. But, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate you coming out. So, see you later.